never have just one person that you're relying on because if that person gets sick, if that person gets pissed at you, if that person leaves for whatever reason, you're screwed, right? What's up, everybody? My name's Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, STR Nation? Mike Shogren here with another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. And today, we are changing it up. So instead of doing our regularly scheduled interviews, I wanted to share a video that was part of our exclusive content in the free Facebook group from a couple weeks ago. Every single Tuesday, we go live. We call it Tuesdays with Mike and Mike. And we also have Mindset Monday in there. Um, And so you guys should definitely check it out. So make sure that you join the free Facebook group. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. We're putting out a ton of content on YouTube. Really want to push that channel and give you guys as much free value on there as possible. I love the podcast because it's nice and easy to listen to. I'm a big podcast guy, but sometimes it's nice to be able to get the visuals and we can go a lot deeper on YouTube than we can with a traditional podcast. So head over to YouTube, search short-term rental secrets, subscribe, and uh, we're posting in there at least two times a week with fresh content for you guys. So Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join the free Facebook group. And one last thing that I'm super excited about for you guys is for all of you loyal listeners, we are working on putting together a free program for you guys. Um, But basically, we're going to have a free program that will talk about the three different models on how to get started with short-term rentals, how to analyze markets, how to analyze deals, uh, how to furnish properties, different technology that you need to put in there. And we'll be constantly refreshing that. And it's going to be completely free. Um, just text resources, text the word resources to 978 242 Again, that's text resources to 978 242 And I'm really excited for this for you guys, because I know that we get a bunch of DMs and different uh, messages and We're putting together this free program just for you loyal listeners. So really excited to share that with you. And one last thing, if you're enjoying the podcast, please like and subscribe um, and share it with people. Okay, we're putting out all this content. We want to get the message out there to help as many hosts as possible. Um, So if you can subscribe, uh, leave us a review and share it with anybody that's in this industry or looking to get in this industry, we'd greatly appreciate it. So with that being said, Thank you again, as always. We crossed the 50,000 download mark, which is amazing. And we couldn't do it without you guys. So, so grateful for all you amazing loyal listeners. Um, And that's it, guys. So what are we talking about today? Uh, How to find the right cleaners. How to find, communicate with them. uh, How to treat them right. How to pay them, compensate them. uh, So that it's a partnership rather than a... uh, a one-way street. So let's get into it. Um, you're the OG on this. So how, when you first got started, how did you find cleaners then? What are some of the mistakes that you made? And then now how do you find cleaners and um, what do you look for when, when partnering with somebody? Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> early on, uh, trying to remember how I found my very first cleaner. I may have asked, I may have asked my real estate agent for a referral, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember if that was how I found her or I tried referrals. I tried Craigslist. I tried Facebook marketplace or something like that at the time. And um, I had this woman that was working for us uh, for like six months and she was awesome. Like she was great. You know, this property is three hours away from where I live. I couldn't get there even if I needed to, like in a pinch. And so I needed to have somebody that was good and reliable. And she was awesome for like six months. And then all of a sudden one day I had a a same day checkout and check-in, right? So checkout for us is 11, check-in is at four. So we got a fairly tight window, five hours to get that property turned over. And I'm checking, you know, the locks, I'm checking the cameras. I'm not seeing her there. 
So I start texting her. She's not responding. So then I start calling her. She's not answering. And I call and call and call and call. Finally, now it's like one o'clock, one thirty. I'm freaking out. She's not answering. And then I just started like <laughs> panicking because I only had one cleaner, like a single person that I was relying on to clean that property. Right. And that's a lesson learned. You don't want to put yourself in that situation. So I started cold calling cleaners off of Craigslist, off of um, care.com. Like I literally was just Googling cleaners anywhere near my property. And it's a pretty rural area. It's up in the mountains in New Hampshire. There's not too much going on up there. And long story short, I was able to find some woman who was a godsend and went over there. She didn't get it cleaned on time, but I was able to like pay for the guests to go get dinner and come back later. And she got that property turned over. Um, but the first important lesson I learned with cleaning was never have just one person that you're relying on. Because if that person gets sick, if that person gets pissed at you, if that person leaves for whatever reason, you're screwed, right? And so now what we look for is ideally, I want to work with a cleaning company that has multiple cleaners, that's been in business for a while, that has a track record working with short-term rentals, not just a traditional housekeeping company, because it's a different ball game cleaning somebody's house versus cleaning a short-term rental. And the expectations are different. And we can talk about that in a minute. So I really like to look for cleaning companies that I can partner with, build a good relationship with. And as I scale, I have confidence that they'll be able to scale with me, right? So as an example, the cleaners that we started working with around here, they scaled from me from, they're with me when I had two units in the city and then it went to four units and then it went to six units and then it went to a hotel and then it went to a second hotel. So they clean the majority of my portfolio. It's like 30 something properties that they clean for me. Now, what I found is we grew very quickly and they, you know, I've worked with them very closely. We have frequent phone calls, everything, but at a certain point, we get to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to hire like full-time employees to help back these people up because I just have so much volume that they're struggling to get it all done in that window of time. So right now we're in the process of hiring two more like full-time employees that work directly for me that can float between my properties around here locally to help them out or to just take care of a property for that day. When I say a property, I mean like one of the hotels say we have like six turnovers that day. Okay, cool. That person can handle six turnovers. But if I have 10, 12, 15 turnovers in a day at that property, it's a different ball game, right? So as you scale, these are just things to think about down the line, like as you add more and more units, but ideally you wanna find a good cleaning company that specializes in short-term rentals, that's a good fit, that does a good job, that communicates well with you, that you can build a relationship with, that can continue to service your current inventory and scale with you as you add more inventory. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How many how many units do you have now in in the location that you're mainly in in Beverly, right? Uh, so there's Beverly, Salem, and Rockport. There is twenty in Beverly, two in Salem. 13 and Rockport. Yeah. So whatever that math pencils out to you, this is a good amount, right? That's so, a decent amount. Yeah. I'm not going to take a stab at that, but uh, well, that's, that's a lot of good points there. Um, going back to, for us. So for the newbies too, when, when you're starting out, I, I made this mistake in, in the early, early stages too. I went on turnover B and B uh, which is a great platform but it was in a rural area and I started interviewing cleaners that were like 30, 40 miles away from my place. And I talked to them. They're like, yeah, we're about a hundred bucks. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't really know what the going rate was for a three bed, two bath in a rural town in North Carolina, South of Asheville. So um, I was just asking them, Hey, like, are you familiar with Airbnb? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we know it. I didn't even ask them if they had cleaned for Airbnbs before. Um, so that's very important. Ask them if they have worked on short-term rentals, VRBO, Airbnb. Um, second part two is <clears throat> what else can they do besides the cleaning, right? If they're familiar with Airbnb, familiar with VRBO, familiar with same day turnovers, what else can they do? They make sure they're tech savvy as well. Uh, for us, we were five, five hours away from our first property. So 
if the ring doorbell went out, if the Wi-Fi went out, if uh, the August lock went out, all the stuff that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, I needed somebody to go over there and do that. And that's what our cleaners do for us. They they change the ring doorbell batteries. They've actually installed ring doorbells for us. They've installed new locks for us. Um, they check on the Wi-Fi. Uh, they know how to troubleshoot it. They know how to troubleshoot all my appliances. Um, and so they, they kind of go above and beyond. But it is because, going back to hiring them, they are a short-term rental management or, or cleaning company. So they've got about 40 uh, short-term rentals that they manage across like a 30 mile radius, just south of Asheville, North Carolina. And that's all they focus on. Um, also one thing to ask them is like, how many, how many times do you come to the property? Um, our cleaners come there three times. So they come there right after the guest leaves to make sure nothing's broken or, you know, they take the linens away. They take pictures if anything is broken or, you know, something's wrong. Um, they have cleaners come in and clean the whole place. So get it spotless, go through all the COVID protocols and everything to sanitize everything. And then they come back to pre-stay where they put the blankets on, put the sheets on, you know, get the music going. They set the ambiance. So it's very important, even in, even if you're in the city, it's very important to set that type of, you know, ambiance, whether it's music or some sort of smell, um, if your cleaners can help you go that extra mile to create that type of experience that you're looking for, for your guests, um, that's, that's huge. It goes above and beyond. So asking the right questions, it's not just like, Hey, are you familiar with Airbnb? Hey, can you clean my place? Hey, how much do you cost? Like how much do you cost should, should almost be last. Like you want to pay the premium because one, you're not paying it. The guest is paying it. And two, you're paying for a five-star review. Like you're paying for a five-star cleaning because that is the lifeblood of your business is your cleaning team and the operations. And that is the core of, of the business and the core of what the cleaning team does. So those are just some, some experiences um, I've had. And then I know you, you've compensated or you've, you've had to up your prices sometime or the, the cleaners have up their prices because expectations go up as well. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit, how, how to compensate and um, make sure that they know what they're worth as well. hundred percent. And I mean, <clears throat> part of it is, is building a good relationship with them and no, no, my cleaners know that I genuinely care about them like as people. So like, if I'm feeling like they're stressed out, I'll go to a property and meet them on site and just be like, Hey, what's going on? Or if it's remote, I'll get them on the phone and just be like, Hey, what's going on? Feeling like you're like, you're stressed. What can I do to, to alleviate some of that pressure and noise from you right now? You know? And one of my cleaners, she was afraid to ask me for more money, but she needed to add more people. Cause we have so many freaking units that they were driving themselves crazy killing themselves, trying to hit the deadlines. And I was like, listen, Sue, tell me what you need. And I will, I will pay you what you need. Like, this is a partnership and I value you guys. And I don't want to see girls going home crying. Like that is not what I want. So let me know. Let's work through this. What, what do we need? Do we need more people? Do we need to revamp our process? So the other lesson learned, like at scale, if you get into multi-unit properties, maybe the approach to cleaning the unit is going to change. If I have 20 units in a single building, the approach should probably change where maybe somebody goes in, strips everything, takes it off and starts doing laundry while other people come in with the freshly laundered stuff that have like kits per room and bang it out yep. that way. And you just think procedurally different. How do I create more efficiency because we have scale now? And so I had yep. multiple meetings over the last few months with my cleaners like, all right, how do we make this simpler? How do we make this more efficient? How do we make your life easier? You know, how many more people do we need? Okay, what's that going to cost? Okay, cool. Like, and just work all of that stuff out with them as a true partnership, you know? And Mike, you and I have talked about this, like helping them grow as a company as well. Like yeah. I invest heavily in personal development and coaches and mentors. So like, I'm trying to help my cleaners grow their business and bring on more staff and bring on assistance to help take the workload off so they can elevate themselves as to a CEO of their company and they don't have to do all the cleans. Right. And so when you create that type of partnership, it's a win-win all the way around. 
Yeah. I think a key thing that you touched on at the beginning though, is setting the expectations of what that looks like, you know? So again, my cleaners, they will change out ring batteries. They will check Wi-Fi for me. They will double check certain things. There are certain things that I'll rely more on my handyman for than on my cleaners, but have setting those expectations up front. So it's like, this is what we're looking for. Is this something that you guys are comfortable doing? And is this going to work out for you long-term? And having that conversation up front, rather than 30 days in, your cleaners are pulling their hair out because they're like, this is not what I signed up for. Because I made that mistake early on as well. Like, wait, you want me to do this and you want me to take the trash and you want me to do, like, what are you talking about, right? And so you want to have all those conversations up front. So if we go back to where do you find them, right? We mentioned a couple of them, just to recap. So we talked about turnover B&B. That is one that I definitely recommend. It can be a little challenging if you're in a very rural area sometimes. So if that's the case, then I turn to Craigslist. I turn to care.com. I turn to Handy. I turn to Facebook. Um, I go to the realtors in that market. Hey, who do you know that you know does uh, short-term mental cleaning in this market? And just work that network. But there's a lot of different areas to go to. Then you want to set the expectations of, of what you expect from this partnership. And then you also touched on the tech savvy side of it. They don't have to be tech geniuses, but the software that we use automatically creates a list of cleaning tasks that gets sent to them in their phone. And it automatically gets updated every single day. So I need them to use this phone. And I actually just had to drop um, two properties. Just It wasn't the right fit because they didn't want to implement the technology that we were using. And so my team has to manually go in there and text them Oh, there's a cleaning here. There's a cleaning here. There's a cleaning here. Oh, the guest changed it. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. And it was just, it's not efficient that way. And so if you're finding owners that, you know, from a co-hosting standpoint, if the owners want to clean the properties, I try and avoid that if at all possible. I get it. Sometimes they may be retired or they want some extra income, whatever, but they need to be able to use the technology that we use. Otherwise I find as much as they say it's going to work out, Anytime that you involve humans, there's room for human error. So people miss stuff. That's why we create these systems and this automation because computers don't need to think. They just, they're programmed to do certain things. And if people won't use that technology, it just opens you up to more exposure, which pisses off your owners and it pisses off the guests. So you really want to try, do your utmost to stick to your standards. This is how I run my business. This is the technology we use. Are you good with this? And then these are some of the ancillary things that I may need you to do. I may need you to change batteries on things. I may need you to troubleshoot some things. I definitely need you every time you go to the property to check for any missing missing or damaged items and send it to me immediately so I can put in a claim if that's the case. I need you to fill out the inventory checklist every time so we know what our inventory levels look like and we can get those replenished ASAP. I may need you to go to the local Target or Walmart to pick up some of those supplies for me and I can pay for it and add you as a pickup person or you can pick it up and I'll reimburse you whatever's easier for you. Those are some of the extra things. I may need you to take laundry off site. If the washer and dryer breaks, I might need you to go to the laundry mat and do a couple loads of laundry. And I will compensate you for your time, but I might need you to do that if that ever happened. I might need you to take the trash to the dumpster or to the cycling center because I don't have trash service here or pickup isn't for another few days. Like starting to think through what are some of the other boots on the ground things that I might need them to do and just spelling those out. So there's no, there's no gray area later and making sure that they're a team player, like that they're the right cultural fit for you. If you're finding that your cleaners are constantly complaining about stuff or they have too much work or the guests are a pain in the ass. Oh, the place is gross all the time. Like, sorry, you're a cleaner. Like this is what you do. So like, I'm all about helping them solve problems, but if they don't have the right attitude, I don't want to, I don't want to be in partnership with somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I want to touch on, on one thing as well, like appreciation for cleaners. Uh, they, they don't get enough appreciation. I think there are some really dirty situations that they're in. They, they have guests, you know, throwing trash everywhere, spilling stuff, staining stuff especially in the vacation markets. Um, we've experienced that this summer and it's, it's not fun. It's not fun for them. It's not fun for us. Um, but if you can show your cleaning team some appreciation for what they do, 
uh, and empathy for what they do, it's it goes the extra mile. Like we're we're in this business one to make money, but making money, I don't really care about the money. It's the lifestyle that we're creating, right? The lifestyle they're creating is for me, it's helping other people. Like that's what I'm focused on. It's helping my family first, taking care of myself first, really, so I can get in the right mindset. And then taking care of my family and then focusing on all right, how many other people can I take care of? And if I can't make money with my cleaning team and they're not happy, then I'm not helping other people. So find out different ways that you can work with the cleaners to make them happy um, by whether it's compensating them or just sending them like, Hey, like I sent my cleaners a note this past time this past weekend when we were there. And I just said, Hey, like, we're so thank thankful and grateful for you guys. You keep this clean. I mean, it looks like nobody stayed here and we've had 60 people in here since, you know, the last time we were here four months ago. Uh, we send them, you know, on each holiday, we send them some sort of gift, whether it's like, a pastry that's like $15 that we can send via the mail or a gift card to one of their you know, favorite restaurants or stuff like that. Just things that you would do for, for a business partner. Uh, keep those in mind. And those are so important because they do go the extra mile when there is, you know, a bad guest and there's trash everywhere or there's cigarette butts or like there was dog poop outside one of my properties a couple weeks ago. Like they took care of it. Yeah. They let me know about it, but they took care of it because they know in the back of their mind, like, Hey Mike, Mike and Sierra are going to help us out. They're great to us. So we're going to help them out this time too. So um, 100%. Going a little bit into mindset Monday, but like show, show appreciation. We're all in this business to one, make money, but also you know, create a, create a lifestyle that we enjoy. And for most of us, I'd say 99% of us, it's a lifestyle of, you know, helping other people and, and just improving everyone's lives that are around us. So 100%. A little more of a technical question. We only got a few minutes left, but um, how do you pay your cleaners and how often do you pay your cleaners out of curiosity? Yeah, we pay them once a month. So they send us a bill. Um, it actually varies to, to different um, markets that we're in. Like one, it's once a month. They send us an invoice. We pay it. That's good. Uh, another one is right after they clean, they send us an invoice and we can pay it. The other one is like we actually leave, leave out cash because it's a one bedroom, one bath. So um, it, it kind of varies across the board, but I think if we pay on time, like they're, they're happy with that. So, uh, I know you were doing Venmo for a little while or. Yeah. So being... I think, I think one thing that will be helpful for folks initially, it's not a big deal, but as you scale and you add a lot of units, or if you're in a lot of different markets, working with a lot of cleaners, you want to try and streamline your operations as much as possible. So now we have a schedule that everybody gets paid on Fridays. I do have one cleaner that would just prefer to get paid once a month. So we send hers once a month, same thing. They send us an invoice and we pay it. Um, but we tend to pay. Thank you. She got quesadillas delivered and smells good in here now. Um, a taco Tuesday. A taco Tuesday. <laughs> um, but yeah, every Friday we just, we'll Venmo them. But what I'm finding now is we have so many units and so many Cleanings that Venmo caps you. I think it's like five grand a week or something. So certain weeks, whether I'm paying contractors, cleaners, whatever, sometimes we hit the max. So I'm testing out a new software like bill.com, which if you're newer, don't worry about it yet. But as you're scaling, it's like a hundred bucks a month for this. But what it does is it gives me a dedicated inbox. So when I get invoices, it goes right into bill.com and it automatically sets it up for me to go in and just pay all my bills. So I could set that up for all my recurring stuff. And it just helps. Again, I'm all about systems and centralizing to streamline process. So if I can get all my bills for all my properties and all my businesses to one platform and I can go in there and pay it in certain intervals, it just makes my life way easier or makes my assistant's life way easier. Right. So it's like starting to think about those different options, but Venmo, it's super easy. If you use turnover BNB, you can pay them right through the app. I think you have to pay them through the app because turnover BNB takes a little cut off the top, but um, yeah, I just wanted to cover that because people do ask me that, you know, you can pay them by check, you can pay them whatever. I don't really recommend the cash because it's not really a paper trail, but you know, Mike does this brown bag thing. It is what it is, but it's uh, just two units. So, <laughs> but you're local, right? So like you're talking about the fourplex. Yeah. Yeah. The fourplex. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just right down, right down the street. She said she takes cash. She does a great job. So we bonus her for five-star reviews. If we have a month, all five stars um, on cleaning, we bonus her 50 bucks. So 
Yep. Um, she appreciates that and cash mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah, and, but also and it, she's leveling up her business too. So we're, we're adding more units in this area. She's, her business is getting bigger as well. So, um, and you know, she's getting to take more vacation days as well. Like she used to not take as many vacation days cause she was doing jobs all over the place. Now that like, she's kind of centralized and she's got enough business from us. She gets to have a better lifestyle. So hundred percent. So hopefully this is valuable for you guys. I know it's not always the sexiest topic, but this is massively vital for your business and your sanity, quite frankly. Because yeah. if you start having issues with cleanings, trust me, I don't care how nice that property is. I don't care how cute your house manual is. I don't care how sweet your decor is. This will make your life a living hell if you cannot dial in your cleaning process and your whole turnover process. So having the right cleaners and treating them well and building those relationships, it makes your life so easy because they're bringing you solutions instead of bringing you problems at the end of the day. And yeah. I will compensate that all day long. I do not yeah. want headaches in my business as they come up. We take care of them. We handle them. We move on. We learn from it, but I want to minimize those headaches. And uh, that's it. Anything else, Mike, before we wrap up? No, that's it. Let's go hop over to the mastermind. All right. Take care, everybody. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.